Hey guys, it's Scott here. It's um, five in the morning and I've got up early to continue on my system development. And today I want to show you some of the nuts and bolts of like how you really get down in the weeds and grind out the work. So yeah, so let's get started. So what I've got is really, really simple spreadsheet. And uh, so I went through this particular day for the E-mini noted down the times that there were setups, what setups they were, um, what are they would have they would have made with my chosen exit algorithm. Now in this instance, because I'm doing a mean reversion scalping system, the vast majority of mean reversion scalpers go for something approximately uh, approximating a one-to-one -one, um, risk reward ratio. So there's no need for me to reinvent the wheel like it, you know, if I was doing a trend following setup, yeah, I have to go for big winners, but I'm doing a, a mean reversion scalping system on, on two minute charts. So on two minute charts, you can't really be betting on the big on the big wins all the time. So anyway, so that's what I'm starting with is, is going for a high win rate, one to one profit. I've made some uh, I've made some uh, some notes, and what I do <coughs> I have my screen capture software here. So. I mark down the uh, the time and the date of the setup, and usually I do something like this because the setup was here, um, and this is what it looked like on the on the multiple time frames. So you can see in this instance we have a we have a nice setup with confirmation on multiple time frames. Um, it was a winner. And so here's what I do. So first of all, I share this to screencast.com, which is free. You can make a free account. So you, you, um, you can use any screen capture program you want. I use this one. And while that's saving there, I can put that bad boy in there. The next thing that I want to notice is my MFE, my maximum, my maximum favorable excursion which you can see from here to here, we have a risk of 3.25 pips, a 3.25 full points, sorry. And you've got about one, two, three, four. Um, I just eyeball it. There's no need to get out the calculator for everyone. We've got a lot of work to do here. Near enough is good enough for calculating, M calculating MFE. So here, I've got some notes. I've got an M because, and these notes are going to be important when I when I come back later and do it, <coughs> and go through my research. Maybe there's setups I want to throw out. Maybe I want to, um, maybe I want to tighten my setups up. Maybe I want to loosen it. Maybe I want to take more setups. Um, these notes are going to be important. So I've got my screen capture. I've got my maximum favorable excursion. Um, there's some tricks with MFE which are from the Price Action Masterclass. I, I won't go through them now. They'll take a while. Um, but essentially, you know, if, if if something goes and makes 4R and then pulls back 2R and then goes and makes 5R, like happened here, that's a 4, it's not a 5. You know, in the real world, you don't get 4R and allow that to become a 2R and then you, you just don't. That's just, that's, that's um, um, yeah, that's silly. Okay. So the next step that we do, the next thing that I need to know is the R value because that's going to be significant um, for the size of the trade. So if I'm doing some e-micro futures, it's five bucks a full point. So it's going to be um, 16 bucks risk for this trade. So we can risk a minimum of $16. That's important because it's it tells you what, how small the account size this can be traded with. Mm, coffee. Okay. Now we get into the real meat. We need to develop a scatter plot, and the reason we do a scatter plot instead of just a back test, at least at first, at first you want to do a, a, a scatter plot because you'll see why. But for each trade, we're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points of data. So our and we're only testing the entry condition. We're not testing the exit. We're not testing. 
maximum favourable excursion, we're not testing out why we're not testing anything like that. All we're testing is, is there a statistical probability for the market to, to rise or fall for a short once we are in a trade? So what I do is bar zero is by definition um, zero, uh, zero profit. Bar two, you can, uh, bar one, you can see here, our high is 788.75, so our entry price is 89. Our stop loss is uh, uh, 86.50. Um, so we have, uh, actually we have three, I got that wrong. We have 3.75. points of R. So at bars at bar one we have you can see here our entry price is 89 and our close here is 89.25. So we have 0.25 on 3.755 is 0.066 profit uh, profit in R. And so what do I do I'm going over this slowly. It speeds up to me. I got that wrong. So bar two, we have a close of 89.25 and a close of 89.5. So we're up another tick. So I don't need to get out the calculator again because I know if this one was 0.066, this one is... 0.13 roughly, double it, right? <coughs> so there's some, so there's a little mental hack going on there. And then we look at this bar here. The close, 789.5, and the close here is 788.5. So we've gone from up two ticks to being down two ticks. And because we already know that up two ticks looks like 0.13 and down two ticks will look like minus 0.13. Easy, right? So what we're saying is that bar zero, we had no profit. Bar one, we have 0.066 of an R profit. Bar two, we have 0.13 of an R profit. Bar three, we have minus 0.13 of an R profit. Okay. Um, bar four, we have uh, the close is 789.25 which is exactly the same as bar one which is 0 0.066 so you can see how this is going to happen faster and faster when you do it the close here is 2.790 and our entry price is 2789. So we're up uh, 1 divided by 3.75.26. Of course, I could have done that in a spreadsheet. Okay, so our spreadsheet is starting to look like this, right? Our close here is 2790 and our close here is, is, is down a tick, so we know a tick is 0.066, so we're up 0.2, and you can see I just used some mental arithmetic here. The last one was 0.26, we know that it's roughly down 0.06, so this one's 0.2. It doesn't need to be exact, it do, this is not... Um, this is a near enough, it's good enough stage. We're, we're, and what we're going to do is we're going to plot all of these in a cloud of dots. And uh, it's going to look something like... Um, I was just reading something on the, um, on the 
web this morning with some scatter plots. That looked nice. Okay. So we're going to plot all of these dots exactly like this, and we're going to get a scatter plot. And this is a negative correlation scatter plot. So what this is showing is that as childhood poverty rates rise in Connecticut, your high school graduation rate falls. So what there is is there is a, uh, um, a strong correlation. Now, the tighter these dots are together, the more they make a line, the, the more universal that holds to. The more that they're just a scattered cloud of random data, um, the more the, the weaker that uh, um, that edge is. So what we're going to do is we're going to is this is going to tell us about our entry entry setup edge which we've designed. Is it a really solid edge? Is it a tight tight? Is it a tight scatter plot, or is it some kind of small and weak edge with just random things that points in the right direction? And it should point up and to the to the left, not down. Um, so a positive correlation would look something like this, right? All right, moving on. And you can see this is happening slow right now. It's going to speed up. And obviously, uh, you could uh, program to do this in, in Python or something like that, or you could export the data into an Excel sheet. Um, I don't know. You, I'm not afraid of a little hard work here. So the, uh, the close is 75. The close here is 25, so it's uh, so it's up point f uh, up two ticks, which is up 0.13, which is 0.2 plus uh, 0.13 is 0.33. Bar eight, and the close is down two ticks, which is down to 0.2. And then down again, it's down one tick. And bar 10 is the close is up 1.25. So the, the close is 2790 and our entry price is 2789, 2790.75, so it's up 1.75. <coughs> and here where two seven nine three is equals four on three point seven five. All right. So let's see what we've got here is bar 0, bar 1, bar blah, 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 blah. and we're going to plot all of these on um, on a scatter plot and you can see for, we have 12 points of data for just one trade so by definition that is 12 times, it, it's orders of magnitude for each trade instead of having one point of data we have 12 points. Now as in addition to that, if you're just measuring a back test, it's entirely possible for your entry setup to be good and just be unlucky. It missed the target by a tick. It, 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 you know, an announcement came out and messed you around, or whatever happened. Or it's entirely possible for luck to to play too big a role. And depending on your type of system, you have to do an enormous amount of testing to discount the effect of luck. Like in the short run, 
really crappy systems perform really well, and in, but in, not in the long run. And the more complicated your system is, the more backtesting you have to do. And the unfortunate reality of backtesting is that without these scatter plots, most systems, depending on how compl complex they are, they could need 10,000 trades of backtest to be a statistically valid sample. So this scatter plot is a way of short circuiting that and doing it around and uh, and and getting away with doing less data. So we might um, we might scatter plot a small amount of data and then and then depending on what we see, we'll either decide do we have to to collect more data or not and. Uh, um, and then once we do that, then we'll get to the straight back testing, which is um, which is much much faster. All right, guys, that is it.